What's up everybody, welcome back to the new video on eTech Viral. Flutter just released a new stable version 3.16 with so many improvements, breaking changes and new features. Which includes material design 3 updates, impeller improvements and its preview is now available on Android stable version. And Flutter Casual Toolkit has been updated with new game code templates and new game cookbook recipes and lastly the support for DOT 3.2 which includes number of features and improvements and we are going to touch all upon them. So before we get started, if you want to learn Flutter from beginning to advance, you can start watching our 7 weeks of Flutter and Firebase developer bootcamp which contains dozens of resources and complete apps to make you an in-demand Flutter developer. Anyways, let's get started. As always, we are again starting with Material 3. Yes, again this one, but no worries, this time you will obviously find new stuff as it's 3.16 the latest update released yesterday. Anyways, the first thing is you already know, the use material design 3 property is now by default, however, you can still go ahead and set it to false. Next, they added new motions where material 3 now includes new easing and duration classes along with saying bye to material 2 of course which is going to be deprecated very soon according to our friendly cabin. Next, they added additional options in the edit menu. On native iOS, users can now select text and initiate a share menu that provides several standard services. In this release, they just added the lookup, search and share options. Next is an accessibility thing. A new class text scalar now replaces text.textscale factor, which in Android 14's non-linear font scaling feature that helps those who are visually impaired. Next, a new function has been added to the focus manager that is apply focus changes if needed. This improves the performance of menu items. What it does is it restores the menu focus. When user clicks a menu item, focus will already have returned to the item that had focus before the menu was opened. Next, Flutter apps on Mac platforms now order the shortcut modifiers in menus to follow Apple Human Interface Guidelines. The Apple Human Interface Guidelines are basically a set of guidelines for developing user interfaces for Apple platforms. These guidelines are designed to help developers create interfaces that are consistent with the overall look and feel of Apple's operating system. Next, a new matrix transition widget has been added which allows transforms when creating animated transitions. Based on the current animation value, you can provide a matrix transformation that is applied to a child widget to create effects as you can see on the screen. You will find code example for matrix transition in the video description. Next. They added a new class called Pant Pattern and this is a new addition to the Flutter test package in Flutter 3.16. It allows you to validate pant calls made on the canvas by widgets like custom painters and decorations. Previously you would need to use a golden file to verify that the correct color and rectangle were painted. However, with the Pant Pattern class, you can now write much more concise and expressive tests. In Flutter, a golden file is a reference image that is used to verify the visual appearance of a widget. Golden files are typically generated by manually rendering a widget to a canvas and saving the resulting image. Once the golden file has been created, it can be used by a test to compare the render image of the widget to the golden file. This comparison ensures the widget is visually consistent with the reference image. Next. Two-dimensional scaling has been improved which now supports keep alive widgets as well as default focus traversal and implicit scrolling. The two-dimensional scrolling foundation is under development but it's already very powerful. With 33.16, you can use the foundation to create custom two-dimensional scrolling or you can also utilize this package created by Flutter.dev. Now let's follow up everything from material design, accessibility and other package update stuff and let's talk about performance improvements in Flutter 3.16. In the previous stable release of Flutter 3.13, Flutter team just mentioned that the impeller engine on Android preview is held because it was not that much stable at that time. But a hard work on Vulkan backend for impeller on Android now on Flutter 3.16, it's finally released on stable version and is available for preview and feedback. You can enable impeller in Android by running your Flutter app on the following command or simply you can include this code in your android.manifest file. Impeller is currently available on Android devices that support Vulkan. On the devices running a 64-bit OS at Android API level 29 or newer. And this is the performance chart which showcases the improvements over the time. Let me explain it. In this image chart, 
the x axis horizontally time with the months from March to October. This axis tracks when the measurements were taken and the y axis vertical is frame rasterization time in milliseconds. Here lower values are better because they indicate the faster performance. And next let's move to the dots and lines on this performance chart. So the green dots or lines represent the 99th percentile of the frame rasterization times. This means that 99% of the frames were rendered in this time or faster. It's a high watermark that indicates the performance under heavier loads. And the yellow dots or lines represent the 90 percentile of frame rasterization times. This indicates a better performance level that most frames 90% do not exceed. And lastly, the gray dots lines likely represent the average frame rasterization time. This gives a general idea of the typical performance. Next on performance in previous releases, the performance overlay was not displayed on a pillar. This version fixes this issue and performance overlay now can be displayed correctly when the impeller is enabled. Next, the ring is now displayed correctly. In this release, Flutter 3.16, the property of the pen class enable the ring is by default set to true and is duplicated according to the Flutter duplication policy. The duplication policy is basically a certain time in which an API gets duplicated and is removed on a specified time. And the dithering is a technique that uses a pattern of pixel to create the illusion of wider range of colors than are actually available. This can be useful for smooth out gradients and reducing banding artifacts. You can see the before and after images on the screen where in the before image the dithering was disabled and the after image the dithering was true. Now let's discuss the gaming updates in Flutter 3.16. In recent years, Flutter casual game development community is growing rapidly and tens of thousands of games are released from simple fun puzzles to complex arcade games. In this release, Flutter is launching a major update to its casual game toolkit. It's a collection of new resources to help you move from concept to launch with more general specific templates such as card game and endless runner game and service integration like Google Play services, in-app purchases, ads, achievements, crash letters and multiplayer support. And next on Flutter Web, the Flutter framework emits timeline events as it works to build frames, draw scenes and track other activities such as garbage collections. These events are exposed in the Chrome DevTools performance panel for debugging. You'll find the link in the video description. Next, during testing on Android devices, you might have experienced it required to scroll the scrolling wheel number of times in order to scroll down to see enough content on the screen, which was kind of laggy behavior as you can see on the screen. But with Flutter 3.16 release, it's no more the issue. We can scroll seamlessly without having any laggy behavior. Also on Android, the predicate back navigation feature is now on stable version. The Android 14 allows us this feature to use back gesture on your device to peek at the home screen behind your current screen, as you can see on the screen. And next on iOS, Flutter can now be used to UI for certain types of iOS extension using Flutter widgets. But also keep in mind, this does not work for all types of app extension because there might be limitations on the API. To learn more about adding iOS app extensions, you'll find the link in the video description. Next, Google Maps platforms offers the ability to customize the style of your map from the map styles page in the Google Cloud Console. This lets you create customized experience without having to update your app code each time you make a style change. To use this feature in your Flutter app, you can simply refer to your map using the map ID set in the console. Next, a new DevTools extension package has been created and published on PubDev by Flutter team, which allows package others to build custom tooling for their packages that is surfaced directly in the DevTools. And next, it allows the package authors to write powerful tools that leverage existing frameworks and utilities from the DevTools. There are already three tools exist in the DevTools, which you can use in the DevTool extensions for those packages that are Provider, Petrol, and Drift. Next, there are also other updates on the DevTools in Flutter 3.16 that are a new home screen that shows a summary of your app has been added. And the other improvements include overall performance, hot restart robustness, and text selection and copy behavior. And lastly, network profiler response viewer improvements. And next, a new extension has been added to the VS Code. Now that extension in Flutter VS Code has a Flutter sidebar that gives you 
easy access to open third dev tool screens view active debug sessions view available devices create new projects hot reload and hot restart run third doctor and much more and the last thing that we will be discussing is dart 3.2 update the first thing in dart 3.2 is non-nullable promotions for private final fields so what is non-nullable promotions Non-nullable promotions are features of Dart's null safety system that allows nullable variables to be automatically converted into non-nullable variables if it can be determined that they will never be null. This helps to make the code safer and more expressive by reducing the need of explicitly check for null values. So how does non-null promotions work for private final fields? In Dart 3.2, non-null promotions is now supported for private final fields. This means that if you declare a private final field as nullable, for example, the fill level, which is private final field, you can still safely use it as a non-nullable variable inside the same class. This is because the private final field can never be null once they have been initialized. All that and more. If you want to learn more about Dart 3.2, you'll find the link in the video description. And if you found this video informative and helpful, thumbs up to the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, watch our 7 weeks of Flutter and Firebase developer bootcamp in order to polish your Flutter app development skills. Link in the video description. That's it. See you in the next one.